Hello students, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from University of Delhi and this session we will discuss about generation of nerve impulse and also conduction of nerve impulse. In the previous session, we did understand the situation where nerve cell is in a resting condition and we have understood the resting potential. Now what will happen to the resting potential of a nerve cell? which was in a resting condition and now is being applied with the stimulus and that is what we will understand in this particular session. You can see in this diagram the nerve membrane is shown which is positively charged outside and negatively charged inside. It is in a resting potential. Now a stimulus is provided say at point A. From point A it has to move further on the membrane. What will happen at that point of time when a stimulus is given? It is to be conducted. So what happens when the particular point of a nerve cell is stimulated by any stimuli? At that point the positively charged ions they start moving in very freely. With the result the inside of the membrane becomes positively charged and outside becomes negatively charged. I would like to explain it one more time to you students. As you can see in the diagram this is the membrane and it is positively charged outside and negatively charged inside. Now suppose a stimulus is provided at this point we can call it point A. Now because of stimuli the situation will suddenly change. The positively charged ions will start moving in and negatively charged ions will start moving out. We can also call it depolarized condition. Please remember in the previous session we said polarized condition of a resting cell. That means polarized condition was in a resting state. Now it is no more resting. The stimulus is provided on the membrane and changes have taken place. And when changes have taken place, outer membrane in that particular point, not throughout, has become negatively charged and inside has become positively charged and we call it depolarized condition which is very important for impulse to move on. So one point you understood that when there is a stimulus at one point, at that particular point the membrane is depolarized, the positively charged ions become freely movable towards inner side and negatively charged ions will move towards the outer side. This is the situation at one point. Now this impulse has to move forward. When it moves forward say from point A to point B, then the same thing will happen at the point B but in a different manner. Of course, the positively charged ions will move in and negatively charged ions will move out but outside the membrane the movement will be from B to A and inside it will be A to B. That will also imply that outer membrane will become negatively charged, inner positively charged because circuit is completed. And it will also mean that the point A becomes normal, the positively charged outside, the negatively charged inside. I repeat this point once again. When a stimulus is at point A, the movement of positively charged ions in and negatively charged ions out. But when a stimulus moves from point A to B, then outside ions, the movement is B to A and inside is A to B. Circuit is completed and hence at point B, the outer membrane is now negatively charged, inner membrane is now positively charged, but A has become normal. That is 
positive outside and negatively inside. Similarly, when this impulse will move from B to C, the C will change and B will become normal. So, what point I am trying to emphasize is as the impulse moves on, the points behind become normal. So, the nerve cell is in a depolarized condition only at the point where the impulse has moved, not through which it has moved. The behind part becomes normal. So, once the impulse has passed through total nerve cell, the total nerve cell will become normal or in the polarized condition. Depolarized condition comes only when impulse is passing through that particular point. So, students, I am sure you have understood what is mean by depolarized condition. Polarity of the membrane at the site A is reversed, hence depolarized. And I am sure you have also understood the importance of depolarized condition in this particular case because stimulus can move only by making membrane depolarized. Now, this is a point where you can understand action potential. I am sure you remember the resting potential of a resting nerve cell. You also remember about ion position in a resting nerve cell. Now, you have understood what happened when impulse was passing through nerve cell, when it had become depolarized. So, this condition is called action potential in comparison to the resting potential which you understood earlier. So, action potential means electrical potential difference across the plasma membrane at site A is called action potential also termed as nerve impulse. This is very important point. Action potential means some action taking place, changes in the gradient, changes in the electrical potential and when it happened? When you applied a stimulus. So, if nerve impulse is passing through a nerve cell, it is a condition of action potential or action potential is another word for nerve impulse. Now, this sequence is repeated along the length of the axon point A to point B to point C to D and so on till the impulse reaches the other end. Along with this, the impulse is conducted from one point to the next point. The fiber becomes once more responsive. How? I told you that once the impulse moves from site A to site B, the site A becomes normal. Site B is depolarized. When it moves from site B to site C, the C is depolarized and B becomes normal. That means A and B both are normal. When a stimulus moves from C to D, D is depolarized and A, B and C become normal. What I am trying to explain that by the time the impulse has passed through the nerve cell, the total nerve cell becomes normal in the, the meaning thereby it becomes responsive again. So, fiber is again ready to conduct more nerve impulse and this is very natural phenomenon happening on the nerve membrane. In short, you can understand it like this that it is in a resting condition, the resting potential, it is in a polarized condition where it is resting and when impulse is passing through this, it is depolarized and the action potential comes in. And when nerve impulse has passed through the membrane, again it comes to the resting condition and again the ions are kept normally the way it should be in a resting condition. So, this is very peculiar capacity which a nerve cell membrane has in our body and that is why we say that nerve cell is excitable. You have understood so far how a nerve impulse is conducted from one end of nerve 
to the other end. It has gone from one part of axon to the other part of axon. But now we should also understand how it goes from one nerve cell to the other nerve cell. Axon will end at particular point, we will call it axonal terminal. After terminal what happens? We know it makes a synapse with another nerve cell. In this diagram you can see a synapse. Synapse is a space which is present between two nerve cell that is axonal end of one nerve cell and dendrite beginning of other nerve cell. Now this stimulus which is brought through axon up to the axonal terminal should move on to other nerve cell through synapse entering the dendrite and again going through axon again reaching the axonal terminal. That means role of synapse is very important. Synapses can be of many types. It can be electrical synapse or it can be chemical synapse. So whenever there is synapse, there will be one presynaptic neuron and there will be one postsynaptic neuron that is one before and one after for which this synapse is providing a junction. If it is electrical synapse, then they are very close by and the stimulus passes from one to another like electric current. But in our body, such synapses are rare. So, we have chemical synapse. As the name indicates, the chemical synapse will need some chemical. And here I would like to emphasize that between the two presynaptic and postsynaptic neuron, there is a synaptic cleft which will be eventually filled with a chemical to help the transmission of nerve impulse. So, what happens at the axonal terminal, there are vesicles, a neurotransmitter which may be adrenaline or adrenaline depending upon the kind of nerve cell whether it is cholinergic or adrenergic. Now, these vesicles will release the neurotransmitter when the impulse reaches up to the axonal terminal and they will come close to the membrane and burst and give out the neurotransmitter and this neurotransmitter will join with the receptor molecule of the membrane of other neuron and hence the nerve impulse is transmitted through neurotransmitter. So, children you have understood how conduction of nerve impulse takes place along the membrane of a nerve cell and how concentration gradient helps and how it is depolarized and once it reaches the axonal terminal, it passes through the synaptic cleft and reaches the other axon through neurotransmitter. This is the process how nerve impulse is transmitted along the nerve in our body. Thank you. Thank you.